So when you are buying and selling a practice, as a purchaser, you have to look for, ideally, the previous dentist to let go of the potentially problematic people that you know are going to be problematic. Oh, I see. So you're almost, you need them to clean house for you. You don't need it. It's, well, it's advantageous. It. Would it be advantageous? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't want to buy a practice where you're not so sure if the employees are going to uh, work out or not. I mean, ultimately, there's always risk when you're taking on employees. And sometimes after working 10 years for someone, things to go sour. Uh, but you want to limit how much things could go wrong with an employee. So ideally, if um, so buying and selling practices, an important factor when buying a practice is if you're looking to keep the employees or you're not looking to keep the employees. Right. If you're not looking to keep the employees, then you want the seller of the mm -hmm. practice to actually terminate the employees and have to pay entitlements to these employees under or at their own accord. Yeah, because it's almost like you're buying a liability there. And it's happened right. in about, actually it's happened in most cases where someone buys a new practice. It's happened more often than it hasn't, where yeah. they have taken over a practice, they inherited all the staff. Uh, at first glance, everything seems great until they yeah. all start working together. And again, there's usually a big disconnect because a lot of the offices that a younger dentist will buy tend to be practices that are slowly dying out. Meaning yeah. the dentist, the other, the older dentist is retiring. I mean, he's taking things easy. It's almost like a hobby practice. Yeah. And of course the staff get used to working in a hobby practice. Then the new dentist will take it over again with these huge ambitions to actually build something wonderful. And then they'll hit the wall and yeah. then realize, Oh, what do I do now? Right? So I, I never thought about it that way that maybe, you need to make a judgment call on, do you really want to buy this office with everyone or do you only need some of the people? And maybe, yeah, the, the best way to go about it is to make sure the older dentist who's selling the office takes care of that mess so that it, you don't inherit that problem. Yeah, so it's interesting uh, because if sometimes you want to keep the people mm -hmm. and if you want to keep people employed under the new practice, then guess what? The old employer or the old dentist actually has to pay much less for these employees, whether they have a contract or not. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time, a purchaser would want, and I do advise on having the seller before selling the practice well enough to actually introduce new contracts. That limits entitlement or that limit entitlements to the minimums. So that when the purchaser even, or when the seller, before they actually sell the practice, if they want to terminate people, they could actually make use of these contracts and only pay the minimum entitlements under the Employment Standards Act. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, because in a lot of these cases, what, what also works against these uh, newer dentists is they've just taken out a gigantic loan yeah. to buy this office. So they're in debt. Uh, they still have school debt. You know, they're buying a practice that has issues and they yeah. can't even fix it up because there's that block, right? So it's a little bit different if you know, you've got a million dollars in the bank, you can just say, look, I'm just going to pay you a $10,000 termination. Just, just leave me alone. You know, I just want to move on with my day. Yeah. Um, oftentimes like these younger dentists, they can't do that. They're, they were, their picture was, you know, everything was going to work perfectly. There's not going to be any hiccups and then it happens. So um, yeah, I mean, you, can't even, you can't even just terminate people by telling them here's ten thousand dollars and just go away. Uh, a, a dentist must have a signed release signed, but before they actually give the money or at the time of giving the money, so that they mm -hmm. make sure uh, that this employee doesn't, after receiving that ten thousand dollars, go to the human rights tribunal or go to the Ministry of Labor or to a lawyer and say this is what happened. Now we need to sue them again. Sure, they gave me some money. Or maybe but that was in overtime or whatever. I didn't sign anything that stops me from speaking with anyone or continuing a lawsuit anyway. So a release is absolutely important when you actually want to pay someone to um, essentially have them go on their, uh, on their way. Right, uh, right. Just giving them money will not guarantee at all that they're going to go away.